Batman learns so fast that he masters one new martial arts style every year, becomes fluent in a new language, and a new field of science. Looking at his growing list of skills, it's more of a question of what he hasn't mastered. We've all heard that our brains are neuroplastic, that they can mold themselves around new experiences. Whenever Batman decides to pick up a new fighting style, he's banking hard on the brain's major processes of synaptic creation and genocide. And he has to whether he likes it or not. You see, around the age of 25, Bruce came back to Gotham after years of training abroad in Asia, Europe, and the Americas. What's interesting is it's around this exact age that our brains go from being passive learning machines to being quite guarded. Before 25, your brain is extremely flexible, capable of changing itself to anything and everything, whether you want it to or not. This is to help younger individuals quickly adapt to their environment, form their identity, and pick up basic skills from their parents and peers rather quick. But around the time that Bruce decided to don his cape and cow, the matured brain becomes far more selective. It will no longer simply change itself to an experience just because it happened. And this isn't necessarily bad. For these individuals, the brain will only respond when they selectively focus on what they want to learn and spend effort on doing just that. Because this is how you signal to your brain that something is important and get the data needed to commit a brain genocide. Because learning done well is a pleasant death in your head. When Bruce went to practice in Nanda Parbat, redoing skills and trying harder skills, he's allowing perhaps the most vital process of learning called synaptic pruning to happen. This is where an individual learns so well that their brain will literally target and destroy every single connection that would cause them to slip up to do the thing wrong. So how then does Bruce or other hyper learners actually go about learning new skills? Batman trains really freaking hard, but he also trains a whole lot smarter, avoiding what I'll simply put as mindless repetition, and instead being an utter master of iterative learning. Iterative meaning to go again, but I don't just mean that you repeat the same skill all over again. You see, it's not just the fact that you get them reps in, and proudly scream, I did blank for 10,000 hours. Neurologists find that while on the right track, this isn't all that there is to it. We can do better. Iterative learning instead involves a cyclical process of feedback and refinement. Cyclical as in whenever you go to learn whatever it is, you start again from the bottom, building your way back up. Every time Bruce trains with a sparring bot or picks up that Portuguese book, he reiterates the path he took the day before, rebuilding the skill as if he was learning it for the first time. And why? Why do researchers find our brains learn this way? Because from my experience as a teacher, this is not something that a student or abusive teachers alike who want that one foot twisting backflip to happen right now want to hear. Well, welcome to the world of building big complex skills. Let's remember to learn Learn your brain needs is craving not only data, but corrected successful data. And the more variety it has, the better. If you start at the bottom, you will likely rack up more successful data and will have a much easier time correcting any errors that will then signal to your brain to delete those bad pathways, for it then to go about building the correct pathways. Those bottom steps will then get easier and you will now be able to move up and be successful at the much harder steps. Fast learning is a moving process. At any point in the process, if something starts to get too hard and you utterly fell more than one or two times, what do you do? You go back, you drop down, fix the error, and then build back up. And because you're getting so many different repetitions at varying levels of the skill, your brain has so much more data to munch on to not only build, but to destroy any connections that it finds to make things not work, that make you mess up that punch or word pronunciation. And then the next day, rather than starting at your limit, you reiterate the process all over again. We even see Bruce do this when he's training under Wildcat, Master Kirigi, or various experts, where he's gotten so good at training that when he encounters a problem, he really is only hung up for a few moments rather than days to weeks. And it's like this for anything, for everything, because this is the way to give your brain the precious data it needs on what might be missing, to fill in the gaps and destroy the neurons that cause the mistakes to occur. Because, thanks to a few past past conversations with my neuroscience professor, learning is a process of experiencing and then correcting errors. In order for our brain to delete errors to make the bad things go away, it has to first encounter them happening.
happening, and then we correct them at a step we can actually handle. Funny enough, once you understand how to actually go about gathering various data for your brain to munch on, you've only won half the battle. Cause learning doesn't exactly happen when you're in the act of learning something. If you truly want to cement the stuff in your head, I'm saying that you gotta do a lovely thing called sitting down and closing your eyes. Whether it's just for 10 minutes or for a whole night. In the episode we did on Batman's pretty dangerous sleep schedule, we saw that Bruce often takes short naps to downright micro sleeps throughout most of the day just to get stuff done. And without these naps, all of his training would practically go to waste. While well, researchers have found that nerve connections are formed when you're in the act of doing something, we're gonna emphasize here that they also found that much of learning and killing off those useless connections happens when you sleep. And not just in deep sleep, but even when you take a short nap or simply stare at a wall with your mouth hanging open. Just think about it, this is the only time that your brain finally gets a moment to itself, where it can pour over everything you've gathered. But if none of this was very interesting, then I save my most interesting fact for last. Batman practices what is practically the most dangerous sleep schedule known to man, where he micro-sleeps for one to five seconds at a time, and you can check out how he manages his sleep routine here. See you in the next one.